just recently got out of seeing Spider-Man Far From Home. The epilogue to this chapter of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the which the debate was, okay, is, is Avengers Endgame the real end of this chapter of the MCU? Kinda? Kinda? Um, it's, like, this This is the denouement, the denouement. This is the epilogue. This is the wind down. I mean, it's a big, super heroic epic, and it definitely sets up consequences for the next Spider-Man movie, um, at least the next MCU Spider-Man movie, but it is a film which is definitely about, okay, the end of Endgame happened. That was really big. We didn't really have a chance to react to that in the film itself. Not, not really. So this is the opportunity to go, okay, let's let that breathe. Let's let that out. And we'll see. And let's look at what this means. In this case, it's, okay, the snap happened. And what and what was unmade has been remade. So, what does that mean? Now, this doesn't go full on into the philosophical implications. Nobody who was snapped was not was not snapped. I should say. Takes a moment to go. Hey, Peter. What was it like when you were snapped? Where did you go when you were snapped? That sort of thing. Nobody asked those questions. That, that That's not what this movie's about. Um, this movie isn't about the legal implications of the snap. This movie isn't about, okay, people die, people snapped and were legally dead because they were dead and now they're back alive now and what does that mean when it comes to property and marriages and remarriages and that sort of thing. Um... That isn't really explored here. If the Netflix Daredevil series did more LinkedIn connected, well, the the Netflix Marvel Universe, I sh Marvel series, I should say, was LinkedIn more with the um, MCU, and if that hadn't officially ended now, I would have loved to see the Daredevil season after um, set post snap. Where, oh, five years, I have Matt Murdock, but just Matt, be snapped. And I come back, okay, Matt's back. Foggy's five years older. Um, Karen's five years older. Maybe have Karen be snapped, too. Um, but let that have... Matt be back and have Matt and Karen and um, Foggy coping with that, but at the same time, oh, the practice of Nelson and Murdoch now has to has to uh, plow through the virgin snow. The the, the, the wrong term. Um, the untilled soil. What are putting it? Yeah, has to has to plow through the untilled snow soil of post snap law and what that means and that we sadly aren't going to get that i can hope we get like maybe if on the disney plus marvel series if we get the sensational she hulk hulk series with um with the exploration of superhero case law combined with also post snap or a snap related case law um that would be that would be interesting but sadly no um so instead this is more kind of the 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 instead the reaction here is more to we are down Three major Avengers. Kind of four. 
I mean, Thor has never really been here on Earth. He's been here off and on, but like never really. Um, no, he's never had the constant presence on Earth he's had in the comics. Um, as opposed, yeah. So there's that. Uh, so Thor being off planet, that's not too weird. Um, Captain Marvel, as established in her film, she spent more time off world than on world once. Um, once she started developing her powers. So again, not that big a deal. But Cap's gone now. Um, Tony's dead. Uh, Vision's dead. That sort of thing. Um, uh, Black Widow's dead. So what does that mean to the Marvel Universe? Oh, by the way, um, sorry for dropping the spoilers there. If you haven't seen... I don't know, maybe edit that bit out. If you have not seen Avengers Endgame before you've seen this film, yeah, I would say it is absolutely important to see it first because it spoils event the end of Avengers Endgame considerably. Um, so I mean, I, I hope the bits before that kind of made that clear, but if it wasn't, if you have, if you get, oh, I'm I only watch Spider Man Marvel movies. Spider Man is the only Marvel character I know about or care about. There are bits which will not, which will not make sense without the context of having seen Endgame, um, Infinity War and Endgame. Um, and similarly, um, if you've seen Infinity War but not Endgame yet, then you're go then important plot bits from Endgame will have to be given away in order for this in this film in order for this film to make sense. So instead, this so this film's focus is on okay. In the wake of Tony being dead, Cap being dead, and Black Widow being dead, who steps up? Um, not just the sense of oh, three major heroes are okay, but actually yes, three major heroes are out of circulation. What does that mean? Um, in terms of the superhero situation, but also in terms of how things relate to Peter Parker's life, with Tony Stark being sort of a surrogate father figure for a time, implied in um, Homecoming, and now and then also in Infinity War. Now Tony's gone. What does this mean for Peter? Uh, he kind of has like. Peter has that a good example is Peter has that moment where like like from Iron Man 3 where when Tony's asked hey, what happens when you went through the what happened when you went through the portal and he has a panic attack. Um Peter has a moment like that when he's asked about, okay, hey, are you going to be the next Iron Man? What is how are you going to follow an Iron Man's shoes? And he has what feels like a similar panic attack. And for justifiable reasons. So that's a big part of Peter's arc in this movie. And then on top of that, also, there's the whole matter of the class field trip to Europe. Um, the class dynamics having changed up some due to the snap. Or, what, or as it's called here, the blip, because people just, as far as for... The implication is sort of for the, for the people who were blipped, that they blipped in and out of existence. Uh, the implication is that not everyone was aware of what happened. Peter knew what was, what was happening when it happened, as we saw in Infinity War, but some of the people we see don't know. In any case. Um, so there's that. And so we have the class dynamics of the field trip, and with this also comes the appearance of this new superhero trying to jump into this power vacuum, a mysterious man of mystery called, uh, whose real name is Quentin Beck, but who is, um, ends up getting dubbed Mysterio. Um, if you're familiar with Spider-Man at all, you know... Quentin Beck's game. 
I quit. You, you, if you know the the origin story of Quentin Beck, his first appearance in the comics is written by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. You know his shtick. You know what he's up to right out of the gate. And the question becomes immediately: How does, in what ways does do our heroes pick up and figure out what the game is and what variation of this game on the game is? So I will admit I can't say that I came into this movie not knowing in advance, oh, Quentin Beck is a, is, I mean, I I know Mysterio's game, I know what his plan is, I know what his his goal is, to a certain degree. Um, so, I can't, so, like, that that bit was prematurely spoiled as soon as I saw the trailer. And, oh, Mysterio's in this movie, they go, oh, I know what this means. I know that there is that that something is up here, but I don't want to go like. Sh- but I don't want to be that guy who shouts on the internet to people who don't read comics, uh, who only know Marvel characters from Marvel movies. Hey, Mysterio is blah. I mean, yes, it's something if you do a Google search, you can look on Wikipedia now. Oh, Mysterio. That's who this character is in the comics. Because, there, of course, there is always the possibility that they will put some interesting spin on it. As a great classic example, um, in, like, like for Spider-Man Homecoming, the Vulture is a thief with flying wing, with jet-powered flight wings, yes. But he's not a old He's not a borderline ancient man. He's not ancient, but he's not, he's not a real old guy. He's old in the sense that he's an adult who has a daughter, Peterson. It's not a case of, oh, but it's not a case of, oh, he's like Aunt May's. He's not senior citizen age. He's not getting the senior citizen discount at the theater, that sort of thing. So there's that. Um, so the question is, yes, the comic book version of Mysterio is this. Do you have the expectation of this? Will they change this up and what and in what ways? Um The most spoiler I will say about about Mysterio Mysterio is in numerous respects his comic book version. If you know what the spot the comic book version of Mysterio is, then you know what the, the, the then your assumptions about what this character is are, are, as far as the kind of concept of the character, are correct. I, I do appreciate about the film is it makes it clear to do the thing that Mysterio does. Is It's not something you can do by yourself. And so Mysterio's got, got a support group. He got helpers. And they do a good job of finding ways to incorporate some of these helpers in earlier film from, from like say, oh, these people were also in earlier films in some manner or another, in some cases doing a thing that was related to what they're doing now to assist to assist Mysterio. And and like I think like one character act like they retcon in um Um, certain elements of what Mysterio is doing, just so that okay, maybe like he's not just showing up out of the blue. Like, at the that the person has anyway. Not, there's a bit of there's a little bit of retconning related to Quentin Beck, uh, and his place in the world, but for other members of the people of Mysterio's helpers. Like at least in one case, it's an actor who's a, who's definitely appeared in a previous film, um, and he's given a much expanded role and much more to do here than he did in the first film, Marvel film where he appeared, um, and so that that is really nicely done. Um, other than that, ah. Uh, I kind of missed, um, like, we have a new support AI for Peter. 
as opposed to Peter's Iron Spider suit AI from uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. And kind of wish they did. They just kept with the earlier AI. But the, the new AI, Edith, is, is nice. It works. It is in character flair. Um, but I'll say what really steals the show of this movie is like, like Peter Parker's class already was great in Spider-Man Homecoming. All his classmates. Uh, the, the new version of Flash Thompson is fantastic. He's still great here. Um, Ned is excellent. But Ned and like, like we get more development of the romance of uh, Peter and MJ here, but we also had a whole bunch of great character beats together between um, Ned and Betty, uh, Betty Bryant. And they have the, they, their, their scenes together steal the, almost steal the movie entirely. They like take the movie, pick it up, out, go, uh, we're just going to take this and just walk out the theater with it. Uh, they almost do, but they get stopped by the usher on their way and said, no, 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 there's still, like, more runtime left. Put it back. They do an incredible job here. Um, and there's some great character beats. There's a bit where Ned and Betty and some other characters are in a case of deadly peril related to the antagonist, due to the, the, the big super battles of the movie. And this group of characters are... Like saying their regrets out loud, things which they'd done or hadn't done, or that sort of things, or things they want to come clean about. And Betty, it, Betty's is, um, I will, I will say hers. It, it, it is that oh, I have a, I have a fake ID and I've never used it. And it's funny because I don't know how old Betty's actress is. Um, her character is sixteen. Um, like everyone in like of Peter's class is intended to be sixteen. I need to find out who her actress is. Sorry, Betty Brant, rather. I mean, I'm certain Okay, so it's Angori Rice, I believe, is the actress. Okay. Yeah. So she yeah, Angori Rice. Um her character is six is 16. The actress is 18. She looks kind of 14. Where, like, okay. I, when I was in college, I had a classmate. Who was my circle of friends, who we hung out with in the cafeterians. And she was, like, mid-twenties. She looked 17. Like, her ongoing complaint is that Whenever she went out to get a drink or to go buy beer or to do, do to purchase or spend money on adult things, she didn't smoke, but otherwise go buy beer, um, any of that sort of stuff. She would constantly get carded constantly. Um, and your kind of comment is at some point I am no, I'm going to appreciate, I'm, I'm going to appreciate and be glad to be carded for alcohol and that sort of thing. But now is not that time. And basically, she didn't, not those words, but it was their statement. And, like, I almost wanted a post-credit stinger of her, go, of her, like, with her perfect spot-on fake ID going to try to drive, to buy booze. And just utterly fail because she looks, because like, no, no, this, this is fake. This is fake ID. Can't be real. You're like, 50, you're like 15 at the oldest, maybe more likely 14. 
and just gives this death glare. And it's like, yeah, it's fake, but I'm 18, but I'm like, I'm, I'm 18, or I'm 16, not 14, jackass. Something like that. Um, yeah. So, anyways, just wanted to mention that little anecdote. Um, related to the film version of, uh, of, uh, Benny Brand. Um, other than that, the film is very excellently done. The character performances are fantastic. The character chemistry is together. The scenes, like the heart-to-heart -heart scenes that Peter Parker and Quentin Beck have are really wonderfully done. And I do definitely get the sense that there's a chunk of Quentin Beck who really wants to, like, who wants to be an honest superhero mentor to Peter Parker. Um, who, no matter what else his agenda is, is that this is a, this is a person who clearly wants to, like, who feels that it's important that they be a superhero, not outside of whatever Tony Stark wanted, but out of their, on their own, own volition they want to be a superhero and they have the superpowers to do it and they want to do good with those powers and he wants to be a mentor and also recognize that Peter Parker is a very smart cookie and wants to, to mentor him under those circumstances um but he also knows that if Peter gets too close what his actual goal is will be compromised and I dig that but he's also like he's also a very cold, calculate. He's willing to do whatever it takes for his other goal, and I do mean whatever it takes. So there's that. But anyway, um, I saw the film in IMAX. Um, enjoyed it a lot in IMAX. Did not see it in 3D. We at the theater I was at, we didn't have options for an IMAX 3D showing. They had glasses with the IMAX for some reason, but they're not 3D glasses. They're like slightly polarized to like reduce brightness on the screen. I'm not sure what that's about, but maybe it's you. Okay, you wear this if you're watching a 2D projected movie through a 3D projector, so because the 3D bulb is brighter. I don't know. Um, that was weird. Now that I think about it, but otherwise, again, yeah, it's a fine film. I'm glad I watched it. There are two credit sequences, one part way through, one all the way at the end. Um, I definitely recommend checking, waiting for both of those. Um, they both, the second post credit stinger is definitely narrative set up for a third, for what the third film will be, um, whenever that comes out. Fourth, um, the second one is just flavor with a little bit, with a little bit of setup, maybe. We'll see how that turns out. Um, as always with these new release film vlogs, um, please wait for at least two months until after the films, um, which initially hit theaters to do spoilers in the comments. Any spoilers that people do post, I will hide or delete. Um, because I, I, anything beyond what I explicitly spell out in this video, I will hide, I will hide or delete. So, with all that said, uh, thank you for watching. Next week, we will continue with Legends of the Force with the Rogue Squadron novel. I'll see you then. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like sub and subscribe and click the little bell button to be notified whenever new episodes show up on my channel. If you really like the show, please consider backing it on Patreon. Backers will get their name in the credits and at higher levels you get episodes up to one week early and at even higher levels you can select what games that I do for my future Let's Plays. You can find my Patreon at patreon.com slash count zero O-R.